fiction. There is poetry in the way his fists glisten with desire and kiss each notion from my head like they were slates of acetate. If you could see the magic of his knees, pinning me like a birthday card between collarbones and shoulders, pouring whiskey in my eyes from his miraculous distance, you'd know that I was born to trip this broken fuse. He will weld the scattered pages of my soul together. He will bind me into fiction. So here it finally is, I made two videos to couch this eventual one. The first considered poetry through the categorisation of genre, ostensibly in relation to young adult readers, and thus in relation to literary and popular reading. The second was a mini theory lecture, going back to basics and talking about poetry with relation to meaning and interpretation. If you haven't yet watched either or both, I highly recommend doing so, they should hopefully give some context to this, the most treacherous of tasks reviewing a book of poems. My initial reaction to receiving Absence Has a Weight of Its Own was not the most rapturous of receptions. The tacky, inexplicably outsized pamphlet that slipped from the envelope I'd received put me in mind of some Sunday school sampler, adorned as it was with Alpha, Amiga and other insignia. And I don't understand how the dull grey scrunch on the cover could lead readers to expect anything but a dull grey scrunch of an interior. <sighs> Sometimes I am so glad that reviewing voices feasts upon me that I wouldn't have otherwise deigned to dine upon. I loved this book. Obviously, some poems more than others, but generally I found each piece I sat before to speak of brilliant, highly complex, highly relevant things. They're modern compositions, very few of which utilise rhyme or rhythm in any traditional sense. Some pieces particularly play with the placement of words upon a page, but they never go so far as to play with font or handwriting style, which is a shame because that's something I like. There are a number of key themes explored illness, sex, love, death, life, and all the ways we imagine it. As I was saying in my last video, the poems in this book utilise language in such a way that they must mean different things to different people. They suggest things slightly, they use punned upon unusual adjectives in discourses foreign to them. As I read this book originally, months ago when I first received it, and then reread it in preparation for this review, I realised what a different person I was from month to month, from second to second, as each time I approached these lyrics, I found new readings in them. A lot of the reviews actually featured on the physical back of the book make reference to the poems featuring a character called Roman. He's a dark, confused figure, broken and breaking. He's choking on some evil blackness, and what relationships you do see him featured in are highly problematic. His poems, while interesting enough, I thought were not the primary thrust of this collection, though. I felt reviewers' insistence on referencing them was just lazy. They give an easy way to talk about a group of poems because they're all connected on a low level of language, talking about the same supposed character. It was other refrains that caught in the melody of my thoughts. Those personal to my dealings and interests. Particularly those that consider women and gender imagined, like Other, which pictures a rain-soaked waif on a balcony, who is the pin this city heaves upon. As well as Joy Upon Joy, the countless pieces which pictured people and lives in literature, letters, and the liltingly lyrical. Love Song to a Notebook has the speaker plain their life into neat couplets, the stanza's breath. Portrait at a Cafe watches a woman kill her life by turning it into text. Her hands private suicides by stiffening life into ink. Despite liking this book, one thought I couldn't shake was whether this was really the right format for such content. I know from years of working in bookshops that poetry, and especially new poets, don't sell well. And that can go doubly so considering I really wasn't impressed by the physicality of this book. I wonder now, wouldn't poems like this fit better in some online form? such as Tumblr? Mightn't they be read and shared a lot more freely and widely there? This is an argument I'd wholeheartedly support if it wasn't for the legitimisation of publishing. Published books are seen to have jumped through some arbitrary hoop, to have proved their worth by making it past agent, editor and printing press. I read this book seriously and awarded it literary merit because it came to me in the form of a book. I'm not sure if someone had linked me to a website, if I would have afforded it the same respect and thus have got as much out of it. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on the subject. Do you think poetry belongs in books, or do you think it would work better online? And what do you think of the sound of this poetry book? Absence has a weight of its own. Do let me know down below, and with that I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.